What's up guys, today I'll be showing you how I made the Ultimatrix. A lot of information in it, so I actually am gonna make two videos, a short version and a long version. So this is gonna be the short one. If you wanna see the long one, it'll also be up on my channel. I'll go in more in depth in every single step, you know, so you can follow along one by one. But there's, there's a lot in it, so here it is. Here's a good look at it. I got a bunch of B-roll that's probably on the screen right now. And yes, it is glowing, as you can see, I have it turned on. And all the electronics are inside of it. So the first step that I did is I found my files. I picked these out, um, I found them on Etsy. I'll have a link to them down below the video. Um, I'll probably show a little clip of them right now. I found them, they weren't that expensive and they worked, they worked great. So, and then the second thing is you have to size them. So for me, I'm a big dude. I have some, I, you know, my wrists are, I'm, I'm learning they're massive. So I had this at 112 scale and it's still really tight. So honestly, I'd probably go up. I don't know, if I wanted it to be comfy, 115. So 110 for a lot of you, maybe if you have smaller wrists, 105, I don't know. All right, two, after I picked my file, I picked out my electronics. So the reason I did this, because I had no idea what I was doing. So I picked out something that's called a NeoPixel ring. It's just an LED ring. It is what is up under this electrical tape right here. It's just up in there. It's what makes this light up whenever the battery's plugged in. And I got something called an Arduino Nano, which is like the brain that tells the LED what color to turn on. So there'll be links to that as well. And then a nine volt battery. Why? Because I just had one. It's literally the only reason. So, and the connector's easy to use. That was it. Otherwise, five volt, I'm pretty sure it's fine. I'm just new to it as well. Printing anything in transparent or translucent wasn't really a good deal if you have an FDM printer like me, just a regular 3D printer. Uh, it does a lot better in resin printing, which I didn't have. So I went over to my friends at PCBWay and they printed out everything for me. Um, it went great, everything turned out perfectly. If you wanna follow along exactly with what I did, it's completely up to you, but I went over to PCBWay since I don't have a resin printer and I know they have that capability. Went down to 3D printing right here and then under this tab, you just drag and drop your files. Um, I already have it pulled up. I mean, uh, we'll just use this one for example. You drag it and drop it right in the box. And then once it's done loading, you see how many you want. In this case, I'd want one. Um, we go, I'm doing resin, but like I said, look at this. They also do some metal stuff, which is crazy. I'd love to do some of that. And then went over to the translucent tab right here. So, I, cause I wanted the light in this build to diffuse a little bit. And uh, yeah, so this is how I did it. You follow along with me, PCBWay did great. They all came out perfectly. I'm very happy with it. They also have other services like straight up PCB prototyping and manufacturing and then CNCing as well. They can do all kinds of stuff. So if you don't know, come to the website, look around a little bit, search, go to the products and stuff. You will not be disappointed, trust me. Tell them Chase sent you. Next, I figured out how to wire the NeoPixel to the Arduino to the battery and I found a diagram. I'll go ahead and put it on the screen right now. Keep your eyes on the little NeoPixel down here. If I plug in the eight volt, or not <laughs> eight volt, <laughs> the nine volt battery, here's some significant green lightage. So let's, um, uh, how bright this really is. It's cooking, it's cooking. So just follow this diagram and you should be good to go. Solder all your wires and connections. I do that a much longer tutorial on my other video. So go ahead, go over there and check that out. Oh, next, so you, you do not have to do this part. This part was optional for the NeoPixels. So that ring, LED ring, it's up in there. So it would have done that anyways. It could have just sat right here and it would have gone all the way through the clear parts and it would have been great, it would have been fine. I wanted them to be closer because I don't know why. So I drilled a hole that way the NeoPixels could go up in it. So they're actually recessed up in here which I could show the clip of. Anyone watching this who is young, I don't wanna say underage, because that's a weird thing to say, but anyone watching this who's young, need some parents help to do this, get their help, because this is, I mean, definitely dangerous. And also, I do understand that some of you may not have just a piece of junk wood workbench that you made uh, four years ago um, to just destroy, so you may not be able to just drill right into it like me, but what can I say? Prep for the future. Forget the past. Wait a minute. Completely optional. That was just a me thing. Next, before I painted, I test fit all the electronics, make sure they went in the hole I made, make sure I could route them throughout the wrist and they fit pretty well. The next thing, the fun part, I scuffed and primed the entire thing. 
scuffed anything that I was gonna paint. I just scuffed, it was resin, so it was almost perfect already, honestly, when you're used to 3D printing with an FD imprinter, they come out really, really nice. So I didn't have to do very much on that front. I just scuffed it, and then instead of using a sandable and fillable primer like I use otherwise, I just used a regular sandable primer uh, because it doesn't have to be filler. It just You just gotta make sure the paint sticks. So that's what I used. I don't know if you actually need it or not. I think you do, and I think you should do it, but in my head, I just can't figure it out. But you probably should. All right, and the next, painting, masking and more painting, different colors. Uh, I'll show you which colors I used. First of which, here is just the regular sandable primer that I used. Next for the green, I used JD Green <laughs> for tractors. I think it matched the color of the Ultimatrix really well. Or well, at least the, the reference drawing that I was going for. And then for these like neon green pipes. So for the pipes, I used an airbrush. Uh, I don't have a super nice one or anything like that. I got a cheap like battery powered one on uh, Amazon and I really like it actually, it's pretty fun. But this is the color of paint that I used. If it would ever focus, this is exactly what I used. I think it turned out really good. Make sure you put multiple coats on. So I layered on the green and then I masked off for the black parts. And then for the black, I used just a, I used a Krylon matte black. So these and the airbrush paint are all I used. All right guys, and lastly, the last step was, you see how, so under the top, there's this dial, and whoever has watched Ben 10 or likes an Omnitrix wants this to move, but I also didn't want this to be able to fall out or anything. So this piece and this bottom piece right here, which you'll see on the file, I actually glued onto the, the wrist, so that way I could still spin it pretty freely, and then I wouldn't have to worry about this falling out if it went upside down. So that's how I did that. And also the LED is not glued in there. It just fits so tightly, but it wouldn't hurt to tack a little bit of hot glue behind it. Pretty sure it's fine. Someone may tell me differently, but I would do it. <laughs> Before I let you go, I'd really like to say thanks for everyone for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, like the video, share with your friends. I'm a new creator, still getting out there, but hey, I'm, I got a couple of really awesome projects in the works. I got my black and white Spider-Man suit on the way, or Spider-Man 2099. I also got a new project over there that I'm not gonna show you that will probably be the next new build. And I'll keep making stuff like this because I have a lot of fun doing it. Real quick, shout out to my Uncle Kyle. He watches all my videos. Thanks, Uncle Kyle, you're the man. Sorry guys, I know this video is really short, but if you were trying to follow along and make it yourself and you're like, this didn't make any sense, go ahead and check out the full length video. It's way more in depth. It's, I think it's like 40 minutes long. Even though it's 40 minutes long, I'll try and timestamp so that way you can see what I'm doing and go see how I did it a lot more in depth than I did here. And yeah, guys, I really appreciate the support. Everybody have a great day. Remember, build your dreams. You can do it. And I'll see you in the next one.